Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So we're going to be taking a look at the uh, the weather a little bit and a few other things. And obviously, this is first and foremost as the forecast on this storm has just gone from uh, bad to worse to kind of borderline unbelievable. Uh, it's just it's amazing how expansive this thing is literally still impacting the Yucatan Cuba Florida and way beyond that way beyond that currently um, what I was seeing was highest gusts about 108 miles an hour and also I was seeing those gusts um, more in the southern quadrant instead of the northeast quadrant which is curious um usually typically again the northeast quadrant has the strongest winds but then again there's there's just a lot of weird things with this one now yesterday cindy and i were feeling um very weird now <laughs> i um did an awful lot uh as far as um work energy work uh we did have a busy busy day with energy work part of energy work you can pick up energies um as you clear people's fields and then we did a lot of self-care too but there was something else going on and you know i think uh, what the guides were saying was we were really feeling the impact of helene hurricane helene even though it, it was and is very far away from us still at this moment, this is, is really impacting um, a lot of people. And I, I think we're all getting more empathic and we're all very, very uh, sensitive to the energies. You know, I'm sure it's the case with, you know, 90 something percent of the people watching us right now, I think. You guys are drawn and stick with us. Uh, you're you're empaths. You're you're empaths, and you're picking up um, and sensing the natural and the unnatural. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, um, I, I woke up feeling very, very, very ungrounded, and it's it's this thing that's growing, and and I strongly feel. Also, I think it was a few days ago. Um, this translation I was given there's like a, a ball and I don't understand it there's like this metal ball over the hurricane and it was doing something to the hurricane and then about six hours later it really started to grow and grow and grow so I, I think it's definitely being tampered with I don't understand the metal or or the other information fully right now well maybe maybe the uh, actual technology that's influencing it yeah. you're seeing you know, some sort of amplifiers. Um, I'm not sure what they're using uh, in this case, but you're probably getting a picture of the actual technology. Yeah, I mean, I could I could understand that. I, I just don't understand it myself, but it, it was a ball covering it and uh, um, just moving it and doing something to it. And then it, it continued to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And now I wake up this morning and I'm so dizzy. I'm just very ungrounded. I, I'm not feeling super great. And I think it has everything to do with this this storm that we're looking at and the technology that's being used. So we have that. And there's a lot of people in harm's way right now. So, uh, you know, personally doing a lot of meditating, sending out a lot of energy, a lot of prayers, uh, that people find the help that they need or if they're in a situation they can't leave that they are kept safe or they do the right things to keep themselves safe so all, all of this goes into whenever we send energy out or whenever we send prayers out it's like we awaken their angels we awaken their their bodies so that they can get the information they need to keep keep themselves safe so this is really really big keeping an eye on it absolutely so put out those positive intentions may uh the dark systems plans be thwarted as you know the awakening is occurring very very quickly and it is uh accelerating this is over in uh saint pete you know it's already flooding 
this is the thing. This storm is nowhere, you know, at this point in time. It's not right on top of us. No, you can see where it's centered. Yet, you're going to be kind of blown away probably when you realize the impacts that are already going on. St. Pete, St. Pete Beach is already underwater. And, of course, some people are taking advantage of the storm. Uh, proceed with caution. This is going to be kind of crazy. Uh, when you look at this, this is downtown Sarasota already flooding again. I was reaching out to a friend that's in Sarasota. Haven't heard from them. I, I you know, again, it, it's one thing when you get this once in the blue moon, but this was underwater. What was that about three, four weeks ago? It was underwater. About that, and uh, here we go again. It might not even been that long. When you realize how big this storm is, it, it literally is huge. It's already um, causing tornadoes in Hilton Head, South Carolina. I, I briefly lived on uh, Hilton Head um, for work I was doing, and it is one of the most beautiful, nicest places I've been to. And they have a confirmed tornado on the ground. That is enormous. But get this, flash flooding at UNC Asheville. Yes, Asheville, North Carolina. You already have flooding going on all the way in North Carolina, and this is basically still, you know, impacting the Yucatan Peninsula. There's something very fishy here. Yeah, it looks very odd. Mm -hmm. It feels very odd. I mean, we, and, and, you know, thankfully people are waking up. This is some impacts down in Mexico, as you could see. Oh, man, there's going to be... So many boats going under in this. They were, um, one of the local channels was was showing a marina. And it's like, you know, yeah, likelihood is, you know, these are all going to be uh, impacted in a, in a very, very large way. So what we are looking at now is somewhere betwe between a Category 3 and a Category 5 hurricane as more and more sources right now are are <laughs> looking at the potential that this could be a cat five cat five is a level in which you know nothing is really left standing in the area that it impacts the other thing is the actual physical expanse of the storm is very very large um, some storms like hurricane michael that popped up out of nowhere and went from tropical storm to literally a cat five but we didn't know it was cat five until like well after the fact they were calling it cat four we might have a similar occurrence with this one but let's let's hope that's not the case um, again put out your prayers and intentions that there could be some sort of wind shear to take some of this uh, down but then again at the same time if, if it did stall that would be the worst uh, scenario this is an extremely rare event as you're you're looking again we talked about this yesterday that question mark thing and it like gets it it gets yeah it goes into southern indiana and hooks around and before hitting memphis hooks over towards nashville this is just it's kind of bizarre absolutely bizarre this is going to be, they're saying, this is still going to have Cat 1 status well into Georgia. So, you know, this is a very unusual uh, hurricane, to say the least. And you can see the spaghetti models are, are, are in pretty close agreement to this for the most part. There's a couple here that are running it up in a more uh, usual manner up towards, uh, you know, D.C. rally area. Although over here in this model, then it has it hooking all the way over to St. Louis and starting to come back down towards Atlanta. Um, you got to question the narrative. This is the thing that kept blowing me away because it seemed like every hour I looked, the storm surge was going higher and higher. If it is really 15 to 20 feet storm surge, so many one-story houses... Uh, will not be safe uh, for you on their roof. <laughs> In the worst case scenario, um, that, that's not good. 
So uh, you have everybody uh, saying, all the authorities saying, just evacuate. If you are in this zone, I, I think absolutely if you are, what were they saying again as far, 10 miles inland. They were talking about water, you know, that could potentially be, um, you know, three, four feet or so, 10 miles inland. I've never seen anything like this uh, in a system in the Gulf that I can remember. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting, the impacts too, because when we look to like Hurricane Harvey, um, you know, the fact that it made like a 90 degree turn all of a sudden, and um, I think it was BP Earthwatch was, was showing back in the day, it looked like something was literally shot from Mexico, and then the storm just pulled and, and took an unusual turn. And when the storms stall out, that's what's really, really dangerous. So what you have here with this unusual path, too, is, is realize this storm's going to be just pounding area for a long time if it does take that path. But the storm surge, 15 to 20 feet, you're talking houses completely buried, and you won't even know that they're there. And then, of course, the likelihood of them being uprooted and moved is very, very high. And you have five to eight feet um, over in the Tampa area, all the way down to like Longboat Key. Uh, you know, this area I know so well. My sister uh, for years had a house in Bradenton. And uh, as I've shared with you guys, I lived in Sarasota, um, Nokomis, and Venice. Uh, you know, just crazy to think of this. It's It really is crazy to think of it being this huge. Uh, absolutely uh, has the potential to be completely catastrophic. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm uh, just kind of feel if, if my body is doing this, then there's got to be so many other people that are feeling off and feeling ungrounded um, and, and not feeling well. Uh, because this is something that's definitely affecting us. I mean, that technology gets out there and just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not uh, clashing. You know, those that are sensitive and might not know they're sensitive could be having physical symptoms because of this. And uh, definitely something, something to keep an eye on. It's something for all of us to work on together. I mean, if there is one thing that I have learned doing this work is that we are a team you know, we are on this end and you guys are on that end. And it's like we work together and our energy together creates quite a force. And that's the one thing I will always say over and over and over again, because I want people to truly understand that just because you're at home, just because you might be alone, doesn't mean that you are not effective in, you are not far reaching. You never know when somebody, somebody's higher self might be tied into an archangel or, you know, a very, very large presence. And you're just happen to be stuck in this little human body, but your energy can definitely expand in big, big, big ways. Absolutely. So, yeah, when you're talking that type of storm surge, you're talking, you know, literally houses being uprooted and moved. So, yes, yeah, so let us all um, put out our intentions and prayers that this will not be the case and that any technology that's being used to amplify this uh, be short circuited, uh, eradicated, uh, dissolved. dissolved. Absolutely. Um, crazy. Yeah, this is showing over here, sub 925 mill millibars central pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Record breaking event, extreme impact. You know, I, I went to look at a list of Atlantic hurricane records. And uh, <clears throat> right now, as of this moment, they're showing 333 major hurricanes. Uh, in the Atlantic Ocean since 1851. Feels like somebody's sending some sort of message through Wikipedia, doesn't it? It sure does. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, it, it's just wild. So this is crazy. It's going to be a major impact well inland. Georgia, Western Carolinas, Tennessee, Kentucky as well. This is a rare meteorological setup for this side of the world. It's called the Fujiwara effect. 
Notice how Major Hurricane Helene gets boomerang northwest and then around the low pressure aloft over western Tennessee. Think like two planets orbiting each other that consolidate into one. This complicated and uncommon meteorological process will help keep the forward speed of the remnants very high. Destructive wind gusts throughout central Georgia, Atlanta area, eastern Tennessee. So, you know, very, very weird and unusual. And, you know, you see again all these. This is Noah um, Berggren. There's all these meteorologists that have been doing it, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. And lately, all they have to say is, wow, this is weird. <laughs> Yeah, this is strange. Uh, you know, I haven't seen this type of thing before. Oh, it's a Cat 5. Well, maybe. But maybe. this this is a good kit, Cat 5. It is a good Cat 5. You know, again, uh, the impacts of this are so far-reaching. This is Japan, the Ish Ishikawa Prefecture, as declared a state of emergency. Rains and flooding um, all over the globe. This is going on. This is the worst flooding in this area since 76. It just, you know, reminds me so much of what we saw in Europe. And here you have Thailand yesterday inundated, underwater. It's all over, all over. But then again, we have entire towns and cities under our feet buried in what now is is becoming a much more i would say accepted term of mud flood and this is in mumbai india last night everywhere you look it doesn't have to be right on the shoreline oh no it could be anywhere you could be up in the mountains and then in some ways that makes it more dangerous because you get landslides mudslides this is in uh poland yeah that that Polish flooding was uh, just insane. This is from uh, the fifteenth. This now again storm surge, right? If you do have fifteen to twenty foot storm surge, you're going to be seeing cars going like this, you know, all all over that area. It, it's just in, incredible what we're witnessing, and then you wonder. Wow, you know, could there have really been a Tartaria? You know, could there have really been uh, a lot of technology involved in the washing away of a complete society? Absolutely. So, Tri-Cities in Washington. This is uh, an area that one of our dear friends, our KK, uh, is very familiar with. Hello, KK. We love you and thank you so much for your support. Hi, KK. Over 100 shallow earthquakes have struck on the edge of the Hanford nuclear site northwest of Washington's Tri-Cities since Saturday the 21st. Scientists attributing the tremors to tectonic activity near the Yakima Fold and the Thrust Belt. And, you know, again, uh, it just feels that Cascadia and San Andreas uh, are perhaps waiting <laughs> and and we understand that in these times everything is going to change when we look to the layout of the continents they there they haven't always been this way things do change and sometimes they change very very rapidly now you know this dark evil system that we find ourselves in the dark matrix within uh the natural matrix it does have to be washed away, so to speak, and the remnants need to be washed away. The earth will cleanse herself, absolutely. She will cleanse herself of this. And really, it's amazing how it doesn't take long for her to get back to a more natural state. Um, we have an area close to us that was cut for timber just a few months back, and already it's all sprouting over and... <laughs> The way things grow around here, probably in uh, a year or two, everything is going to be over your head again so quickly. And this is, this is part of the Earth's ability to bounce back 
even in the face of um, all sorts of catastrophes. I know. She, she's she got this. And for those who are waiting for more of a, a 5D Earth, um, that's going to be uh, something absolutely beautiful. And she's not going to have any problem bouncing back. The Earth, she's just not worried about it. She has ways that... Uh, we humans have not seen and she has natural technologies that uh, these other entities who are tinkering with AI and those other technologies they can't come close to what she can do and you know borax is everywhere around our house oh yeah I use borax I use it to you know I use it as like a scrubber sometimes when I'm doing dishes and um, I have to get get stuff off I'll use borax uh, but yeah you can put it in your bathtub and believe me it, you will feel a detox so stuff that might be lurking in your body is going to try to get out and sometimes it's not so pleasant so I wouldn't go with a full dose here it says one cup borax one cup Epsom salt and half a cup baking soda I would definitely cut that whole ingredient thing in half maybe a little more than half and just see how your body tolerates um you know there's all kinds of good ways to get rid of these little nanus nanus that are running around in our bodies and this is one of them and just all overall good health absolutely do not be continuously putting the sugars that are out there in your body because we were looking at an ingredients list earlier when uh when ice cream was like three or four ingredients and now it's like 10 or 12. yeah i mean literally you just you know you that's what you see everywhere um trusted brands uh check every single time you go to buy them because they you know they could have been bought out by somebody else and this happens all the time and then all of a sudden there's going to be things in there that you don't want this is why you know again we focus on eating whole foods as much as possible just simple things <laughs> one ingredient combine them yourself and uh it's fun anyway i mean i love to cook i love to come up with things mm -hmm. You know, in this this borax and the baking soda too. I mean, these make great deterrents when it comes to mice and bugs and things of that nature. It just you know, the creatures do not like anything white and powdery. Uh, people have talked about diatomaceous earth, and I, I haven't had a lot of luck with that. I understand what it does, but I almost wonder if it's not been uh, tampered with because when I use it, I'm not having the same luck and that everyone else is talking about but but the baking soda and the uh, borax absolutely good stuff there's so many things you can do with it just go online get a list and um it, it's wonderful it's a great cleaner it whitens you know you can clean the whole bathroom with it non-toxic and these are strong cleaners too so you don't have to always buy this stuff at the store because you think it's stronger you can use these another one uh, cleaner you can put together i think is um uh hydrogen peroxide a borax and uh and and the baking soda you put those together it's like a bleach and you put it in a plastic spray bottle and it's a bleach but be careful because the bubbles will make it you know burst <laughs> you just got to be careful yeah uh cindy's done some of her <laughs> science projects <laughs> and i'm like what the heck happened yeah, here <laughs> oh my um i just wanted to take a, a moment to thank some of our patreons that uh, after we were sharing about what the system's doing and how it has demonized um, our attempt to try to help others, uh, some people reached out immediately and were like right there to help us. So thank you, Big Mike. Uh, again, he has uh, been a source of inspiration and help time and time again. Thank you, Wesley. Uh, Wesley uh, as well. Wesley's been with us for so long and uh through thick and thin and of course thank you special k and kk uh you guys uh just always supporting us and everything and always cheering and rooting us on yes and thank you thank you jane and uh, you guys have all been so supportive and helping hold us up so that we can help others and and do our best and there's many others in there that I'm, I'm sure we didn't mention we need to do a proper list but it was just so beautiful to see the outpouring yesterday after we were explaining what was going on and uh, people just stepped right up and we are so 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 grateful we we are absolutely anybody that needs um help whether it's energy clearing vedic astrology charts we had 
uh, one person that was going to do a chart a long time ago, then decided against, and then was going to, and then you know wavered, but then did end up um, having the uh, chart done and getting the insights and you know reach out to us again the information's on every single video uh, it's evolutionary energy arts at gmail.com we put down uh that we uh work on a on a basically a donation basis there is a suggestion uh, suggested amount and that's just done so that we can help those that are um, finding themselves in in difficult times now we our problem is uh, we have a limit to what we can do energy wise because it does when you're doing energy work it can wear you down and i plan on going a lot more into um qigong and energy uh, as that was the original intent all the way back in 2017 and it got waylaid as as the realization of what the system was doing and how the system was going into um full attack mode so to speak sent me down into those rabbit holes um, but I do want to share more with you guys and we have only two videos up uh, showing instructions on Qigong and and forms for you to follow but we'll we'll do more uh, and we'll 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 be sharing a lot more information along those lines to to help those of you that are ready for more um, as well as give some recommendations. I really haven't looked at uh, other people's Qigong uh, videos. So uh, there was um, a couple saying, you know, hey, who else would you recommend? Because we're always recommending other channels. Um, I'll, I'll catch up and, and take a peek at some. I mean, there's people I know um, off the top of my head that I've met in person and, and been to... Uh, seminars with and um, but I want to see what they're doing now and how the energy feels before recommending anybody else um, but there is uh, others out there but the other thing I knew, noticed too was it really does feel that the system suppresses that because boy th that is one of the tickets to uh, freedom in so many ways building up your own energy field and and I I, I can't understate it i think it is really in some ways the most important thing for this life and beyond because the energy we cultivate we can take with us we can take with us into the afterlife and then back into embodiment again and of course that's subject for a lot more <laughs> uh, its own videos and a lot more in depth but it is something that I get very very excited about and um, just even del delving deep into Taoism because I feel that Taoism is in some ways perhaps one of the most um, free and clear pure non-dogmatic uh, approaches for looking at the universe in a way that can make um, sense and again in a way that's not harmful and and hasn't been used to divide us mm -hmm. i really like what mike said about you know creating your own energy body it does free you it frees you from from a lot of things it, it can really improve your health it can improve your confidence it can improve um, if you have depression it can help that there's just so much that energy can do and if you develop that energy body it really seems to help people through their lives too so it's it's something that you know we we've done for a very very long time that we like to teach people we have a passion for it because we have seen the miracles not just in our own lives but in other people's lives over and over again so you know i mean just to hear people talk about uh their changes their positive change in their lives after they've taken on some type of a spiritual uh a spiritual practice you know it, it's it's really amazing and and rama is here too and he's super happy with it as well he is he is and and the other thought i wanted to finish with that was the fact that um in qigong it's traditional that you work on yourself at least if not more than what you work on others so you know at one point in time i was working on people on an average day with energy work eight eight to ten hours was typical that was just an average day 
five or six days a week in also teaching it. Um, so that was a little bit too much, <laughs> you know. And when we were in uh, New Mexico, we had a stretch. I think we went about two weeks without taking a single day off uh, of clients energy-wise. And again, five or six, that was really too much because it, it really bogged us down because one of the ways that you clear energy uh, in some ways is that you almost take on to yourself. You don't really want to take on to yourself, but it is part of what happens um, is that some of the energy can get stuck to you. And then so you must be really always clearing, rooting, grounding, sending the energy back to, to the earth and the universe. Um, so it does limit us. So we, we know we, we should not go over three or four people in a day because it does end up posing a risk to our own health. So at this point in time, you know, that's kind of what we stick to. Three is really um, optimal, but but we will see four people, you know, when there's emergencies. And every single day, too, there's other people on the side that will reach out because we, we, we always keep up with our regulars and tell them, you know, if you're in trouble, just shoot us a text and we'll clear from here. Um, during our next, you know, meditation or mantra session, which is usually multiple times a day. So, you know, you add in another handful of people in addition to the three or four that are scheduled for certain time slots. And, you know, it's just an all day thing. So, you know, again, it's um, something that we have to be careful with in that, you know, you don't want to deplete yourself and you always have to be building your own energy back up and clearing and so we'll go into a lot more detail in in other videos coming up yes and and no i i never i never ever um deplete myself but when you're in this line of work you really can't help but get close to people i mean you you talk about their the hardest times in their lives and you're working with them through traumas and you're you're you know giving information back and forth and you honestly you really cannot help but connect with the heart uh, with, with with everyone that we work on regularly it's like you build a relationship with them and there's just no getting around that and the other thing too is like in times of need too we have a core that we could reach out to and and we do and then there's like 10 people focusing on getting something done and you know that has made huge uh impacts in people's lives you know there was one person that reached out again yesterday to say hey um i just wanted to thank you again for our dog because you you know did that and sent energy and you know changed that situation and there was an, another person uh sharing about their their grandchild you know that they had mentioned um for prayers and intention because there was what looked to be a complicated event going to transpire and the grandchild is beautiful and beaming and a little angel embodied right so i mean we like i said we're all in this together and we appreciate all the support i mean more than you guys know and um i mean we can't say thank you enough for for your support all the way around and all the relationships that we've developed and um things that we we get to do because again it's it's our passion it's our absolute passion and that's what makes it so